wasted breaths. No breaths of anger. No breaths, breaths of like just frustration and struggle. And it's like these breaths that praise the Lord. And, and what's so amazing is when you to think about it, it really takes you to understand something that I learned when I was a kid. Uh, this word photosynthesis. Remember 10th grade biology class? I'm about to take you there. All right? Stay with me. I promise you there's not going to be a scantron or a number two pencil. There's no quiz, okay? But I, I need you to understand this because sometimes we, we push science over here, but God is a God of props, and I think science points us to God's goodness. And what's so amazing to me is photosynthesis literally means from the light. And it was discovered in the 17th century by a guy by the name of Zans Eisenhaus, a Dutch scientist. And this Dutch scientist realized that if you brought a plant inside, the common belief was if you had good soil, good roots, and some water, a plant would grow. But inside, it started to die. And he began to realize that there's more going on, more that meets the eye, more that we can't see. And he started to discover that you needed some other elements for a plant to grow. You needed sun, sure, you needed soil, you needed good roots, you needed water, but you needed humanity. And so here's the process of photosynthesis. You've got a sun, and it gives off light. You've got a sun, gives off light, and that light is an energy. Sun gives off light, light is an energy, and these leaves capture that energy. Sun gives off light, light's an energy, leaves capture that energy. But what's that energy do? What's the scientific name for water? You're so nervous right now. <laughs> H2O, <laughs> oh, isn't it? Boy, that's it, with confidence. H2O. Who next some hot water to H2O? All right, so here's the deal, all right? All the guys are like, I like them. Now, here's the deal. You have two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen, okay? Stay with me. You've got a sun gives off light. That light is an energy. The leaves capture that energy, and here's what the energy does. It breaks up the two atoms of hydrogen and the one atom of oxygen. The oxygen they release Thank you very much. That's very kind of you. And then, when we exhale, what do we give off? I know the mumble answer. I know what the mumble answer means. I'm sort of sure. It's carbon dioxide. So here's what happens. Your carbon dioxide mixes with the two atoms of hydrogen, creates a sugary substance called glucose that feeds the plant. Here's what I want you to understand. None of you woke up this morning looked over at your spouse, and your spouse said, what are you going to do today? And you said, I'm going to bring my Navy into breathing. <laughs> None of you as you were walking into church today and you saw all of the foliage walked up, and you're like, ah, there you go, buddy. <laughs> Make some old, good old glucose. That's for you. None of you did that. But here's the thing. By your just very breath, you're giving life to nature. God has hardwired you without you even knowing it to be someone who gives life. And, and many of us, we just go through our day just passively breathing, not even knowing that our very breath is feeding, serving, and giving life. Let's take it even farther with this word breath. Uh, the Hebrew name, the most holy name to the Hebrew people, we just saying it, is this word Yahweh. If you went to a Jewish synagogue, they would never say that word. Uh, when I was flying out here, no joke from... Uh, Chicago to, to Santa Ana, and I was flying in, a woman sitting beside me, she's a, she's, she teaches at a Jewish high school, and she was like, oh, what are you coming into town for? I was like, oh, I'm coming to teach, and what are you teaching on? I'm teaching on breath, and this is the most holy name. She goes, I know the most holy name. And I was like, say the most holy name. She said, we can't say the holy name. I was like, how do you say the holy name? And she says, we just say the letters of the most holy name. What are the letters of the most holy name? She goes, Yohei Bafe. And that's how they would say it. We sing, Yahweh, Yahweh. They would say, yod heh bab hey. They would just say the letters. They think it's too holy. But let's even take it farther. In the Hebrew alphabet, there are 22 letters. 19 of the letters have sounds like a, ah, be, ke, de. Three letters, absolutely silent. You know what the three letters are? yod heh bab And when you see the name Yahweh written in Hebrew, it looks like this. It reads backwards, yod hey vav hey. Mm -hmm. Those letters are all silent. So the rabbis for, for thousands of years have wrestled, why would God give himself a name that's made up of letters that have no sound? And then the rabbi said, oh, no, no, no. It's the sound of our breathing. And every 
time you breathe, you say a letter of the most holy name. Just hear yourself breathe now. You might be sitting with someone at work, and like, there's no such thing as God. You're like, you just said his name, dude. <laughs> It's just amazing, right? And here's the thing. You see how God hardwired you? That you give life without you even knowing it to nature. There you go, buddy. And you are praising the Lord without you even knowing it. This is how God made us. But the question every one of us has to wrestle with is this. Am I just passively partnering with God in giving life? In giving Him worship? Proclaiming His name? Is that all that God wants from me? I think God wants something so much more. I think he wants every one of us to actively, to decide, to choose, to willfully commit, to say, oh, with every breath, with every decision, with every action, I want a hallelujah, I want to praise the Lord. Deuteronomy chapter 30, if you have a Bible, you can show with me there. Moses and God are speaking to the Hebrew people, and they're about ready to enter into the promised land, and they've got some commands. Because they're, they're people who have left slavery, they've been on a journey, and they're about ready to kind of take over this, this promised land filled with milk and honey. But God wants the people to understand how they must live. It says this in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11. Now, what I'm commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. Real quick, let me just stop right here. Just say this. There are a few sounds that are just holy. Okay? The sound of like a perfect switch. That's, that's a holy sound. The sound of the waves breaking. Perfect, holy, beautiful sound. And the sound of a congregation flipping pages, holy, beautiful, profound. I'm like trying to read and I'm hearing the sound and I'm like, thanks be to God. Well done, bro. I just need to say that. Now, what I'm commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It is not up in heaven so that you have to ask, who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it? Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask, who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it? No, the word is very near to you. It's in your mouth and in your heart, so you may obey it. Here's the thing. And God and Moses are just wanting the people to know. You don't have to go across the sea to find some ultimate truth. You're not going to need someone to wait until they get up to heaven. You're not going to need someone to like go across this sea or climb this mountain. Here's the truth. God has put this word within your heart and within your mouth. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says that God has such eternity in our hearts. It's like within us for us to obey it. We just have to be able to listen to it and understand it. Continues on. says this. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to Him. Obedience is a beautiful word. It's just two words that kind of merge together. It means to listen and respond quickly. To obey, you're hearing and you're responding quickly. And to keep his commands, decrees, and laws, then you will live in increase. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. 